Do you have your questions? Are you ready? How many so questions do we have? I don't know. No, you <laughs> lost it behind you right there. He's got notes. He's got notes. <laughs> Doesn't know the questions. I know my questions by heart, but I only have three. <laughs> Let's do this. Hello. <laughs> so, who are you? Who am I? For how long have you been in this industry? Um, for 20 years now. Okay. Yeah, long time. Okay, but you started, you started at like really young? If yeah. You've been in there for more than 20 years? Yes. So what did you start, where did you start and why? Uh, when I was 15, and oh, that's actually a good story. So. <laughs> Always danced, always loved films. My brother and I would watch films over and over again and just learn all the scenes by heart and then reenact them like Indiana Jones. I played Harrison Ford many, many times in my life. You were playing the guy? Oh, yeah. I and he was playing indie. the rock? It was Tom? My brother. <laughs> That's what got him into stunts. <laughs> no, Max was always, um, I feel like we both were probably playing Indy, but um, he played the bad guys okay. quite a bit. Yeah, we love that scene, you know, when the tarantula, like the spiders are all over him and like, yeah, running away from the rocks and yeah, all those scenes were great. And then a little bit later on, I, I loved, like as a, as a teenage girl, I loved like the romantic films and I remember watching uh, the Baz Luhrmann's version of Romeo and Juliet with Claire Danes and Leo DiCaprio, like we were all in love with Leo. And uh, it's the end scene where she's, you know, dying and she's about to take the poison and she's so sad she thinks he's dead and and um or he think yeah and i was reenacting that last scene and uh <coughs> alone in my living room <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> and then i realized i was like oh my gosh this person wasn't just born doing this like she became an actor at one point she made a decision she did things and ended up working in films. And that's when I also realized, I was like, oh my gosh, this could be a job. I could, I could maybe make a living doing that and I think I would like it. So then I told my parents I wanted to act. They thought it was cute. They were, <laughs> they were supportive, but he thought it was like a, you know, a teenage dream. And they were like, sure, honey, just go ahead, go act, do your thing. And then none of them, like none of my, my parents don't, come from the arts, they don't know anything about the film industry, and so I ended up going, I was resourceful, I went online uh, on the UDA website, Union des Artistes, and I looked up all of the agencies in Montreal, regardless of whether or not they represented kids, mm -hmm. and then sent them, sent them an email saying like, hey, my name is and I want to act, what do I do? And some of them got back to me, and just, yeah, and before I knew it, I had an agent and started auditioning. And what was your first audition? My first audition was for, I remember it was for a commercial, it was for GM commercial, I think. Okay. Um, and I told them it was my first audition. Like I just got there, I was like, I'm so excited. And I thought maybe that was a bad thing to do. And it was like, yeah, we can't work with that girl. <laughs> She's way too excited about this. Uh, that was my first one, yeah. Okay, and what yeah. the type of project have you worked on so far? Um, I did a lot of theater when I was in New York after school, and then uh, that led to film and TV, and that's what I've been doing mostly. Yeah. So awesome. you, you told me the story about the, when you went to New York, and it always looks so glamorous. You know, I'm going to New York, but <laughs> yeah. But how you lived, like in a small, if oh we can gosh. call it a room? Can mm -hmm. you? My first talk apartment. About it or? Yeah, <laughs> so I moved to New York, I was like 19, by myself, left my parents' house to move to New York, and um, I was looking for an apartment, which now I know is notorious in New York, and it was this place, the, uh, we were, there was eight of us living in the, in the apartment, it was a two-bedroom apartment, and the, the owner of the building had turned all of his apartment units into um, loft, like, 
he built loft bedrooms within the walls of the apartment. <laughs> so it was a two bedroom apartment, there was eight of us living there, and then my bedroom, and then you had like two regular bedrooms, and then uh, like one, two, three, four, five units within the walls. And so I had to climb a tiny little ladder, and I called it my hobbit hole, <laughs> like Lord of the Rings, and you would open a tiny door, and just like crawl into the walls of the building of the of the of the apartment and then that was my room so you would like roll up a futon and just push it through and, and, and how much yeah. for, was it for the small back then area? it was 800 bucks you know <laughs> yeah i remember it was insane because i had to do two i had to <laughs> had to go to the, to the atm twice get because i could only get 400 at a time okay. so i had to get like 400 dollars cash and then the, the other day another 400. so yeah that was eight in new york 60th and 1st. And then I found out later, years later, that the building is notorious. They call it the monkey apartment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of weird. And, but it's a very competitive industry, like very, very competitive. Were you, uh, like, did you know at that time that it was that competitive or you just had your idea of I want to be an actress mm -hmm. or like okay everyone wants to be an actor or an actress yeah so why did you choose this very competitive industry I don't know I think it was a calling and of course I knew it was competitive like from the moment I told people I wanted to do this people told me things like oh my gosh you're gonna be eating peanut butter for the rest of your life yeah. you'll never make a good living like from the get-go the feedback was so negative And that was something that I had to work against my whole life. Just not only believing in your dream, but also fighting how, what it does to your mind, like how psychologically it affects you. And, and it took me years to realize that, like how much these comments had affected me. And I think slowed me down because to a certain extent I bought into that. I believed yeah. it, but I also believed uh, that I could do it. And from the moment I, I did it, my first film, I fell in love with the, with, with, with the business, like I fell in love with filmmaking, uh, especially, but also, yeah, the joy that it was giving me. I think acting was kind of like a salvation for me. It was a way, it was cathartic. It was a way to work through my my own psychological issues and... and um, What project are you most proud of so far? It's a good question. Uh, I'm very proud of... of um, Well, 21 Thunder is a good one. It's a TV show that's on Netflix right now. And it's very different. It's shot in Montreal, takes place in Montreal. It's English, it's in, it's in English though. And I love that it's super diverse, like the, the diversities that are represented in the show, different languages are spoken in the show. And I think that's a reflection of life today and how, mm -hmm. how small the planet is. And I, I really like that idea. So I'm proud of that project for that. And the story is in Montreal. It takes place in Montreal, okay, yeah. Cool. And they're not shying away from that. They're not pretending like it's somewhere else or that it's just like, no, this is a U21 team in Montreal. And this is how diverse and eccentric and exciting the city is. And I think I love that they sort of like own up to that. Mm -hmm. um, And uh, and figures, of course, that's the latest one. Uh, because and what's of the, the story of figures? Figures is about uh, young women who run away from home and end up being recruited to work uh, uh, first as exotic dancers, and that leads into prostitution and human trafficking eventually. And because of the um, well, the subject matter is such an important thing to talk about right now, uh, and. Um, the social responsibility that the show took on. Uh, it's entertaining, but it's also, uh, you know, it created a lot of conversation. I think it opened a lot of people's minds. It was going against taboos. Um, and again, I'm super proud. Like, those are the kind of stories It's very, that I very tell. popular right now. It's huge. Like, yeah. yeah. It's huge. Yeah, it's amazing. Can you really define what's the real job of an actress? How do you prepare for a role? How do you prepare for a character mm. or a project? I think it depends, I think. But you probably have a pattern that you follow? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, over the years I've learned that there's not one tool, there's not one way, uh -huh. like, you know, I was trained, I was, uh, my training in the beginning was Meisner trained, and that's very much about listening and answering, and you're very much in the moment, but then you have to add text to that, and, and you know, over the years you form your own method, 
uh, what works for you. It's very personal. For me, I like to, I, it's almost like I build up layers. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm making a cake. <laughs> And I rarely, I work from the inside out, like I don't work from the outside in. Um, for example, if I get a script, a lot of times I'll read the script, but I'll, alert, I'll look for clues within the script. And I, I don't, I never start, I never learn my lines just like that cold, like I'll, I'll be sitting, I sit with a piece of material for a long time before I even speak the words. So for example, um, I'll look at a scene, I'll look at a word, I'll look at a sentence, and then I'll sit with it for a very long time. And it's almost like a meditation in the beginning. And I use my imagination. Well, Breathe. can you give, it, give yeah. us an example? Like, uh, let's say, let's take Natasha, the figure's yeah. character. Famous evil character. <laughs> yeah, so how did you approach it? What were the steps you went through or the layers you put on? Mm -hmm. I didn't have as much time as I would have liked to prep for Natasha, but there are so many layers. Like for example, okay, so sitting with the text even before I learn it, mm -hmm. and then sit with it and read with it and um, think of different circumstances and see what it triggers within your mind, like images that will be there. And then I make note of all those things. It could be an image, it could take me to a different place, it could take me to a, a place in my life, a previous like a, a traumatic experience, for example. And then I, I'll add all of those elements to start getting a feel for that character. So that's one layer. Then it's breaking down the scenes and how the other characters affect you. And then, um, you know, we'll start doing research, like talking with other dancers, exotic dancers. And then we can bring it up all the way up to like the physical aspect of things. Like when I gave you a call and said, okay, this woman is super athletic and she's strong and she's like, you know, she needs to impress 16 year old girls. So she needs to be in really good shape and like, mm -hmm. you know, um, in a certain way she's competing with these girls. So she needs to have that physical, um, strength you know yep. or or, and or the look. reflection of yeah. look that these women the, that young women would um, look up to for example and so that with that physical transformation things you start feeling things and then to, to that you add on wardrobe or like what does she wear like for example my nails yeah on figures I had like full length <laughs> nails and I had to learn how to live with those I had those on for two months, so I had to yeah. relearn how to do a bunch of stuff. And suddenly, when you have these nails on, your posture changes. You're, you know, you grab your phone and you're that girl on the phone. You know, you're, you're. It changes how you stand, how you express yourself, your mannerisms. So it's all layers, all the way up to costumes, starting with a meditation about the character and like, yeah. You prefer theater or or film or film. It's very different. I think... Or both. I don't know. I mean, I love both. The theater experience is it's such a rush because you're right there with the audience. You rely on your partner completely. You, uh, you feel the energy of the audience, always. It's, it's such a rush. It's so exciting. It's, it's great. It's, and it's immediate results as well. Whereas if you're on a film set, it'll take forever and so many different... Um, aspects of filmmaking can come and affect your performance in a way. Like once I'm done performing, I'm done performing. But then, depending on how the film will be cut or how you know the take that they have to use, because for whatever reason, the lighting, the sound, or whatever may not be my best take. Yeah. Uh, so your performance is affected by other things. Um, but I love the process of, of filmmaking as well because of those details, because of those technical difficulties. Yeah, hard. Okay, what's the funniest experience you had? The funniest? Yeah. Pfft, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I've embarrassed myself so many times. <laughs> um, a pretty funny one was, um, oh my gosh, my, my audition for 21 Thunder. Okay. Um, I wasn't able to be in the room for the audition, so I had to do a self-tape. And I was between, t I don't know what I was doing, I was busy and I had, no one was around to help me tape for the audition. So I asked my mom to do it. The funny part is that one of those scenes was a sex scene. 
<laughs> There's a sexy scene. I see where um, you're going. <laughs> yeah, where my character's in the car and she's making out with her boyfriend and he goes down on her and as he does that, like she's talking to him <laughs> as we do in life. <laughs> and uh, so I had to ask my mom to read that with me and it was the funniest thing because she's like, she's so cute. So I had to, you know, tell her like, okay, <laughs> just like stand next to the camera. And then she didn't know what the scene was going to be. So I give her the lines and I set the camera up and I'm like alright so mom just read through the scene and I'll I'll be sitting on that bench there and just like you know you just gotta read your lines that's that's it don't do anything and she's reading through the scene and she's like oh oh yeah I'm not gonna look at you I don't want to look at you <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, no just focus on the paper it's gonna be fine and then you know I got the part so, <laughs> so uh, yeah that's kind of funny it was embarrassing <laughs> interesting